May we like? Okay, thank you very much. All right, so at this point, we're live. Good evening, everyone. At this point, I'd like to open up the Ballon Park City Council regular virtual meeting. Uh, so today, September the 2nd, 2020, and the time is 7 11. Uh, let me uh, allow me to stop there real quick. Uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and make a motion uh, to close the uh, the study session. There's nothing to report out, and that's my motion. Second. Second by, con uh, by Council Member Avila. Any objections? Seeing none, so moved. So at this point, we'll go back to the regular uh, City Council meeting. Uh, at this point, I will go ahead and um, um, one more, please. I'll ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. So we'll do that. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God. For liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this one, well, I'll go ahead and ask our our city um, deputy city clerk, uh, Miss uh, uh, Lulu Morales, to take a roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Avila, here. Yes. Council Member Ayala, here. Council Member Garcia. She should be with us. She was just probably trying to connect. So we'll go ahead and go to the next. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem Hernandez. He Project. Oh, he's present. Thank you. Already. Thank you. And Mayor Lozano. Present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Paul Hernandez, for joining us there. All right. So at the. I'm here too. Uh, oh, that's thank right. You, sorry, about that. sorry about that. Mayor, I'm here as well. Yes, our city treasurer, Ms. Marie Contreras. Thank you for joining us, Marie. Thanks, Manny. Thank you for allowing me. Absolutely. Hi, absolutely. Marie. You're welcome. Okay. Hi. Hi. I just wanted to say I'm here as well, Monica Garcia. Oh, thank you. And Councilman Monica Garcia, so we're at full capacity here. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone. All right. So at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, uh, go over. We don't have any presentations, so I will go ahead and open up the uh, public communication. So if anyone wishing to speak. Um, um, Mayor, yes. Mayor, sorry. I have the announcement for the... Uh... Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Yes. I will also um, open up the Housing Authority and the Finance Authority. And uh, the item I need to read here, be right with you. Uh, Mayor, Council, your hold on, let me read this. Council, Council are also members of the Board of Directors of the Housing Authority and Finance Authority, which are concurrently convening with the City Council this evening. And each uh, council member is paid an additional stipend of $30 for attending the Housing Authority meeting and $50 for attending the Finance Authority meeting. All right, thank you. Council Member Avila, did you have something to say? I just want you to turn on your camera. I want to see you. Oh, it's not on. Whoa. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. I thought it was on. Okay. Because I stepped away momentarily. Thank you for, for letting me know that. So at this point, I will go ahead and open up the uh, public communication. At this point, um, Deputy City Clerk Monales, was there any uh, callers that we're going to be contacting? Yes, Mayor. We have three. The first is Mr. Greg Tuttle. And let me go ahead and contact, Thank you. contact him. Thank you. Give me one sec. Let me hook out and try this one more time. Sure. Hello. Hey, Mr. Tuttle, it's Manny. Where are you called in for public communication? This is your time. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you loud and clear. All right. So can I start now? Are you ready? Oh, yes. You're good to go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the first comment I'm going to make is this is to Mr. <clears throat> Mr. Paul Hernandez with his comments uh, a few meetings ago about this generous uh, money that he wanted to spend on body cameras for the police department. Obviously, uh, he hasn't done his research with the police department to find out that all the thousands of dollars we spent on the police cameras for the cars were taken out and put into the city yard, maintenance yard. So 
all of a sudden we now want body cameras. Are we going to waste the money on those and the cops don't turn them on and they're going to be thrown in the trash? We need to think, why did we take the, take the cameras out of the police cars? I know why, but I think you guys can figure it out too. It's a complete waste of city money. The city is trying to regulate the electricity and do like Palmdale or out in that area. Now, here's the problem. You guys sent all these uh, message, the uh, warning letters out or sent the letters out in English. You're 90, 90%, 92% Latino. Why are you sending these all out in English? They should be sent out in both Spanish and English and Asia because you have a population of Asian in here. So with the management that you have right now, which has caused you to go into severe debt, has caused you into going to several, I mean, numerous lawsuits, we're losing money left and right, and now you're going to maintain electricity for businesses and citizens? Nobody's going to take this up. Then we go into the... Shannon, sending out an email to all city employees, which he did at the last election, warning them not to interfere with the election or anything else, and basically petrifying them that they should not uh, do anything but vote for the council if they live in the city, uh, the remaining council, and not uh, look at the other people that are in the uh, running for council. Now then, if you do that, that's a violation of their rights. They do have rights to do that. And the other thing is, is we need to warn Manny Carrillo not to have his people that are in charge over there at the parks and rec to tell the kids that you guys won't have jobs unless you parents vote for the current council members, because we'll have to downsize. We'll have to get rid of you. Now, this has gone on for several years, and it's time that it gets announced. Manny Carrillo should stay out of this, and show, so should the kids of going home to their parents because Manny Carrillo said, says so. Then we have the um, Marlene Garcia running running for a, you know, she swore up and down. I was at the meeting. She's never running for another office, and she was happy with commission. She has was Okay, Mr. Tuttle, the time's up. Mr. Tuttle, the time's up. Okay, thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you very much for taking your time. All righty. Okay, and anyone, anyone, we do have another. Yes, yes, we do, Mayor. We have Mr. John Rios. Let me try him now. Hey, Mr. Rio, sir, this is Manuel Lozano, Mayor Baldwin Park, calling you for the public communication. So this is your opportunity to speak. How are you doing? Real good, fine, thank you, sir. Yourself? Very good. Okay, yes, sir. This, this is your time to go ahead and speak before we start the clock. <laughs> Fire me? Go ahead, you have, you have your opportunity to speak before we start the clock. This is for the public communication, City of Baldwin Park. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk in Spanish, and I want a translator to translate it back into English. Okay, and that will be Ms. Morales. Yes. Pardon me. Yeah, it will be our, our deputy city clerk, Ms. Morales. Yes, sir. Yeah. Did you guys get a professional translator? Well, she is a professional, so we'll go ahead and allow her to uh, to do the translation for you. Excuse me? Who is the one that called to the translation? Yeah, she, she will be translating for you. This is your opportunity to go ahead and speak. So we're going to go ahead and start the clock, okay? Okay, go ahead. All right, all right, thank you. Go ahead. Buenas noches. Quería hablar del jefe de policía que se nos fue en McLean. En las... ¿Por qué 
ese juez y, y por qué tiene una demanda contra la ciudad. Una de las cosas que hemos mirado, y no es ahorita y ahora, ya hace años, por ahorita ya llevamos, que serán nueve o diez jefes de policías. Las cosas es porque tantas uh, demandas que tenemos, la mayoría son de policías que se fueron. Las, los policías que se fueron hoy en día son, uh, son no nomás uh, americanos. Parece como que usted no tiene el respeto para los blancos, los chinos, los mexicanos y a las mujeres. No les tiene el respeto. Y una de las cosas, por, no debíamos tener tantas demandas que tenemos ahorita. Los policías que se fueron, que están demandando a la ciudad, es una cosa que nunca debe haber pasado. Como miré la, 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 el papel y que estaban diciendo que los policías que están demandando eran de los policías que eran los mejores. Mejor decidieron de irse de la ciudad por el, el racist que tiene usted contra ellos. Pero eso es de los policías. Ahora quiero hablar de la sucia y la Cruz Baja. ¿Por qué le tienen tantos celos a la a Susan de estar aludidos de, de que sale en el Senado, que salió de aquí de Bowen Park? La Cruz se, se retiró después de la, de la última campaña que tuvo, pero todo el tiempo le sacan que los 500 mil dólares, la cosa ya estaba hecha. Ya el ingeniero que estaba en ese tiempo ya tenía los planes y todo. No sé por qué le tiene tanta uh, angustia contra una persona fina. Nosotros hemos, somos muy uh, listos para hacer uh, demandas, pero al mismo tiempo a usted no, no le importa. La, la comunidad es la que está pagando por todo esto. No usted, y el, que, el único que está haciendo dinero es el abogado. So, yo no sé qué trato tienen. Okay, Mr. Reels, all right, the time is up. We appreciate your call and, and your input. Thank you. Pardon me? Well, you're, you're, the three minutes are up, so I want to thank you very much for participating. Okay, okay. I want to give the translation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You will. All right, Ms. Morales, go ahead. Hi, good night. I wanted to speak on the chief of police who has left us. Why has he left us and why is there a lawsuit? We have nine or ten a chief of police uh, who have left in so many lawsuits, many of which were from police who have left, not just Americans. You don't have respect for Americans, Asian women or Hispanics. The police who have left shouldn't have happened. I saw the paper and those who are suing and left are the best from the city because you are racist. I want to talk about Susan and Cruz Baca. Why are you jealous? Suzanne is in the Senate and Cruz retired. And you always talk about the $500. The engineer had the plants before and it was a done deal. I'm not sure why you're so worried about this issue. We have a lot of lawsuits and we are paying for them, not you. And the lawyer is making a lot of money. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next caller. Appreciate that. Um, the next one is Ms. Catherine uh, Lozer. She's from um, the library. One moment. Thank you. Oh, Catherine, yes, our librarian. Hello. Catherine, uh, this is uh, Manny Lozano, Mayor of Baldwin Park. Nice to hear your voice. A pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. At this point, we're going to give you the opportunity. You have approximately three minutes. This is Catherine, our famous librarian from the County of Los Angeles in Baldwin Park. Thank you, Catherine. 
Thank you. So good evening, Honorable Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council members, community partners, and fellow community members. Um, as mentioned, my name is Catherine Lozier, and I'm the Community Library Manager of the Baldwin Park Library. Right now, the LA County Libraries are closed to the public, but staff are available to answer questions by phone, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. We're also continuing to offer sidewalk service. Mm. Individuals can place holds by computer, by mobile app, or by calling the library, and then you can pick up your items between Monday and Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Then also launching this week, we now have printing pickups where individuals can print up to 10 pages free daily, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can print going through our website or through a mobile app. We, uh, as soon as we uh, print the print jobs, we will immediately place them into an envelope for confidentiality. Um, for more information, you can go to lacountylibrary.org or you can give us a call at the library. The phone number is 626-962-6947. And also launching this week in the LA County Library system is a laptop and hotspot loan. You can check out a Chromebook and a mobile hotspot uh, with your library card, um, and then you'd be able to use those for three weeks. You can, um, unfortunately, uh, Baldwin Park Library is not one of the first libraries uh, to offer the service. It will be at uh, La Puente, which is the closest, and another uh, number of other libraries. You can find out more information on that at lacountylibrary.org or giving us a call at again, 626-962-6947. To take advantage of all of these services, you will need a library card. You can get a digital card online uh, at our website, or feel free to give us a call. And if you have any account uh, issues, please give me a call and we'll see what we can do for you. So thank you so much for the opportunity to um, serve your awesome community. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. We well, want to make sure we include that in our uh, Baldwin Park uh, website. Thank you. Yes, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All righty. Uh, council members, before we go on, uh, council members have any, uh, wanted to close on anyone's behalf? It, it, yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes, the, uh, Vice Mayor Paul Hernandez. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to close this meeting in honor of my cousin, uh, Disa Hernandez. Uh, she passed away on Saturday, August the 8th, uh, you know, after fighting uh, for several years, close to 20 years of uh, her battle with MS. Um, in the last couple, in the last few months, uh, her battle unfortunately became uh, uh, much stronger than what she could. Uh, maintain and uh, she passed away quietly in the early morning of August the 8th so I'd like to close in her memory thank you absolutely our condolences goes out to you and your family uh, Mr. Hernandez thank you thank you just want to uh, really quick also acknowledge the fact that this uh, past uh, Saturday uh, marked the uh, 50th anniversary of the Chicano moratorium in East Los Angeles and it's very important uh, for us me as a Chicano as well uh, to recognize those individuals that were there that fought uh, for the injustice that was occurring uh, directly uh, to uh, a lot of the Americans of Mexican descent. And the actual um, moratorium was based on the amount of, of, of um, Americans of Mexican descent that were being killed in Vietnam, coming back and facing an injustice. And also Ruben Salazar, a, a very well known uh, a reporter at the time, uh, who I had an opportunity as a young kid to meet who was assassinated at the Silver Dollar. So this weekend I had an opportunity. I was there at the 20th uh, anniversary with Gloria Molina and a multitude of different uh, Latino uh, uh, politicians. It's, it's important for us to recognize that we are all Americans, that, that this country is a multitude of different colors and that's what makes us so unique. But also to remember that, that the civil rights itself, I am myself a, a product of the civil rights and the Chicano movement and I know that if it wasn't for those individuals that fought hard, uh, like, um, 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 sorry about that, Jose Ancal Gutierrez, uh, uh, Reyes, uh, Lopez Tijerina, Rolfo Corque Gonzalez, Maria Elena Martinez, and Raul Ruiz, and a multitude of other uh, Chicano activists that were out there that were speaking for us because we were literally being railroaded in, in the courts. And, and, more, and more so, 
uh, Ruben Salazar, who was very outspoken uh, at the Los Angeles Times reporter um, and, and the, throughout the newscast at the time. And of course, I paid tribute also uh, to um, uh, the, all the <clears throat> individuals that, that partook in that, in that memorial term. 1970, to let everyone know, I, I was in East LA. My parents at the time, we lived in Glassell Park, were visiting <clears throat> some good friends of them on a street called um, Vancouver and Whittier Boulevard. I remember I was 12 years old. They were dragging a television right down there and it was like, what the heck's going on here? So it was, it was a start and the beginning uh, of, of the moratorium where unfortunately looting uh, took place and the march uh, that ended up in uh, Laguna Park, which is now Ruben Salazar Park. And unfortunately, uh, unfortunately the, the, the thing became um, a very chaotic uh, sheriff's department uh, and uh, uh, unfortunately took a, a negative position uh, against a, a, a cause uh, that needs to continue to be lit because we as Americans need to also uh, be known that we have also struggled uh, to be where we're at at this point. And I owe myself being as mayor to those individuals and hundreds of other women that were involved in, in that Chicano moratorium. <clears throat> but also let everyone know that um, I um, contacted COVID-19 uh, and I'm, this is actually the first official week that I feel that I will say 100%. I felt very lightheaded, um, had a, my blood pressure was totally out of control. and. Uh, tested positive and uh, went through the whole process. And I want to let everyone know it's not a good experience. We need to make sure that we continue to wear our masks uh, at, all, at, all, at all times. And I've learned my lesson from there. So uh, my condolences goes out to those that have lo lost their lives in COVID-19. And those that are going uh, through that right now, you've got to hang in there. So on that point, council members have anything else they wish to share? Well, Mayor, first of all, yes. I want to say I'm glad you're feeling so much better. I hear you. Now we're now we're cousins in COVID. Yes, yes. But and, and I'm happy to hear that you're doing uh, that you're doing well. It is it is hard to believe for those that have not experienced it what it's like. It doesn't only take a toll on your body, but it, I think it also takes a toll on your mindset. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I just want to so, thank you. I want to thank you, uh, Alejandra. I want to thank you because you were the one that that came out and, and uh, made it public. And I, I, I wanna follow, I wanna follow uh, your steps in that. And that's the reason I did that today. And of course, we also know that former council member Marlene Garcia was also uh, And you know, um, um, Mayor, a lot of people are afraid to speak and say that they, they got sick. It's almost like it's an omen and they're afraid for people to know that they were actually sick, but it's not something that we did wrong or that there's something wrong with us. It's just something that happens. It's an illness. And luckily for us and for Marlene that, that we came out ahead of this and that we're doing well. Unfortunately, there's a lot that have not, but don't, my word out to everybody is don't be ashamed to say you're sick. It's an illness and we all need to understand that you're doing your best and that you didn't do this on purpose because I know some people may think, oh, they did it on purpose. They got sick, how dare they? They went out, they were on the streets, but that's not the case. It, it can happen to anybody, whether you take care of yourself or not. So again, I'm very happy to hear you're doing well. And thank, thank you very much. And I think part for me was tracing back those individuals. I think the council member uh, Gina Ayala was part of them and also council member, uh, excuse me, uh, Marlene Garcia and a multitude of people total I had to go all the way back to make the good yeah. part about it that they all tested negative. <laughs> good, good to hear. And thank well, you very much, Council Member. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, so at this point, um, we're going to go ahead and go into the agenda. So we have uh, the first, we have consent calendars and items. Uh, excuse me, let me just double check because I'm having here. The consent calendars we have uh, from items one, two, uh, the total of the 14. 14 council members wishing to pull any item? All right, if not, I'll go ahead and move a motion to move the consent calendars from items one through 14. That is my motion. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Hernandez. Any objection? See none, so move. All I right. just have a quick comment. Yes, yes, go ahead. No, I'm not pulling anything, but All right. about the, uh, the BP proud. Um, I, I agree that that message should have gone out in more languages and there, I don't think there's enough time based on 
when we got that notification, we do need to send another notification out in more languages and give the people more time to decide to either stay in with BP Proud or to opt out because there's a lot of people that have no idea what it is and it doesn't really explain what the benefits are. I know it says go to a website, but there's a lot of people that don't have access to go to a website. Um, I think we need to give it an extension before they start up the program and send out that that notification in more languages with more explanation on what this program really is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree with uh, Councilmember Avila. I, I, and, and what they send out is way too busy. The color, even I wear my reading glasses and it was, I had to light the whole thing Sorry, up. Right here. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So somehow we need to have uh, maybe uh, uh, David Vela do some kind of press release or something that's more simplified. Um, I was thinking of doing some recording online uh, to be able to get the message. Residents have the option, but let's... Can we get an extension on the date? Because it's around the corner. Yes. Can we Before look into we an extension, please? So... Um, yeah, let me talk to Ben um, and let me see if we can get additional notices out. I think there's some good ideas to use a press release and we could also use social media. Uh, I'm not sure if we can extend the date, Ben. I'd have to. I'd have to turn to you for that answer. Because it's but enough time for our out really quick. I'll just uh, report, Mayor and City Council, that we do have three more notices coming out. So there is still. A, I don't know exactly how much time offhand, but there's three more notices coming out in the next uh, couple months. So uh, there still is time for. Um, um be proud you know people that will be uh automatically enrolled and be proud they will have the option to opt out so that's still it's so, still several months away isn't um, it so during know, that time, so during that time we can do a press release and a little bit of a media blitz and also include some social media um and some additional mailings in other languages but this is this says it's effective october 1 that's only a month away that's not a lot of time, Ben. It's when we launch the program, but the uh, but someone can still opt out after that. Okay. Well, let's get some language out there that's more simplified. It it, it uh, um, as Councilmember Avila just shared, and it's just it's way too busy. And, and, and what Mr. Tuttle mentioned, it wasn't in Spanish, and it wasn't in, in, in uh, let's say Chinese or Vietnamese as well. So we need to make sure that when that becomes a a multitude of that represents uh, the city of Holland Park. Mayor. Yes, Councilmember Monica Garcia. I definitely agree with you and Council uh, Member Avila, and I would I would just say that uh, two people that approached me about this were they were asking me like what is this mm -hmm. because I don't think it really explained you know what what we're doing. Right. So I think in the messaging, um, Ben, with two more notices coming out, that's an opportunity for us to just better communicate what we're doing and what we're asking uh, residents to do, you know, or what option they may have. Um, so I don't know how to best facilitate that if you want to run it by us at the next meeting um, or if you feel comfortable, comfortable enough with the direction that we've, we've provided today. But I do think that agree, simple and very clear. This is what the program, this is what this is. And this is what we're, you know, what the city is doing. And this is your option. This is your choice. Um, so something that's just a little more clear, simplified. Yeah, and make sure that Mandarin and Cantonese, very important because we send out. So uh, please, let's concentrate in that area. All righty. Yes, um, I, I'll do that. I'll work with Shannon on that. We did have, um, no, to note, we did have the other languages in the notice, but it wasn't the entire notice. It was just an invitation in, in the other language to uh, call the customer service rep or visit the website. So we will put more language um, or perhaps do an entire piece in the other languages as well. All right. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate that. And thank you, Councilmember Alejandro Avila, for bringing that up. Very important. All right, so we'll go to the next um, item that we have the city council acting as successor agency of the dissolved community development commission uh, consent calendar. So at this point, uh, we will entertain a motion on this one. Am I correct? Hello? Yes, sir. 
correct. Yes, yes ma'am. Go ahead and move a successor agency to dissolve the Community Development Commission of the City of Bomb Park Treasurer's Report, June 2020. So at this point, I'll go ahead and that is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by Vice Mayor Hernandez. Any objections? See none so move. All right, thank you. At this point, we'll go over to the reports of officers, um, 15 consideration of amendment to ordinance 1447 rent stabilization ordinance of the city of Baum Park to clarify certain provisions. Uh, what staff is handling this? Okay. Uh, Mayor, um, CDD Director uh, Ben Martinez um, can give a brief. Yeah, could you give us just a little brief uh, background, uh, please? Yes, go ahead, Ben. You're uh, muted still. <laughs> Mr. Ben. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Uh, this is regarding the RSO item, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, just a brief little. So this this item is essentially a cleanup legislation item. Um, we are not staff has not made any changes to the policy direction set by the mayor and city council um, last year, late late last year in December when you approved uh, ordinance fourteen forty seven, the rent stabilization ordinance. So all of all this is doing tonight is just cleaning up uh, typos. Uh, some of the numbers in there were incorrect, just the section numbers. And also some of the language was confusing. So we've clarified um, some of the, the, the language in the ordinance, but we are not, we have not uh, changed or recommending any policy uh, revisions okay. at this time. All right, thank you. At this point, I'll go ahead and move uh, for approval of the ordinance number 1447 entitled an ordinance of the city council of the city of Ballin Park, adding chapter 11, section 129 to the Ballin Park Municipal Code. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. second. By Avila. Any objections? See none, so moved. Item 16, which is the approved and adopt resolution 2020-041 uh, entitled a resolution of the city council of the city of Ballin Park appointing representatives and altern uh, alternates as official representative of the city and review of point members. You guys want to bring this back? So yeah. Let's, let's do bring that, it. review this. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll go ahead and bring this to the following meeting. Okay, all right. So at this point, request by Council Members Garcia for discussion and consideration. Council Member Garcia requested letters to Congress explain how we use the CARE Act fund, funding. And I did see that letter. Co Council Member Garcia? Yeah, just uh, really quick. Yeah. I had a conversation with Congresswoman Napol Napolitano, and um, we were talking about, you know, the the stimulus package to cities. And I was explaining, or you know, describing to her how we were using the the funds here locally, and thanked her, you know, for helping to secure that. And uh, from that conversation, she encouraged us to communicate to Congress just what you know how we've used it what the need is uh, because obviously there's competing interests when it comes to um, you know funding and how funding is allocated either to corporate America to uh, Main Street you know to res I mean to um, individuals to corporations there's a constant conversation that's been that's happening and so, you know, she just thought there would be value in us communicating that this, these, this has been the need in our community during COVID and this is how we've responded and we've done it with these funds. So I did see a draft um, about um, the food basket program, but we've done so much. So let's not shortchange ourselves. Um, I mean, just, we are one of the few cities that has provided testing and I think we should absolutely be touting that. Why? Because it was important to us that our residents have the accessibility, you know, that there weren't additional barriers created for them to access testing, which then allowed them to access health care um, because of the early protocols that were so stringent. So let's include that. And then also, you know, we've, we set up a hotline and that's required a lot of resources from staff. Um, to, to respond to the various needs of our community. 
um, along with the uh, food voucher program. So as long as you know we include that along with the senior meal baskets and delivery program, um, you know that I'm good with it. But it's that's really where this came from and um, the value of you know of this item. All right, thank you, and very very good suggestion by the way, Council Member uh, Monica Erma. Excuse me, <laughs> Monica Garcia. Thank you very much. All righty. Okay, so at this point, no further questions. I'll go ahead and move for adjournment of the city council. That's my motion. Second. Uh, second by uh, Vice Mayor Hernandez. Any objections? See none, so move. All right, so at this point, we'll go ahead and open up the, uh, the I'm gonna open up the finance, uh, the finance uh, authority. Uh, this, one more, please. I think there's only, yeah. All right, so we have the treasurer's report from June, 2020. I'll go ahead and move for a consent calendar. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second by uh, Councilmember Alejandra Avila. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. At this point, I'll go ahead and move to adjournment of the, uh, fi the finance authority. That is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right. So at this point, we have the. Um, right, we have, go ahead. Someone have. Uh, okay, we have the housing authority and we have consent calendar. I'll go ahead and make a motion for a second for approval. Any objections? See none, so move. All right, at this point, before I do the adjournment, council members wishing to share anything before we close? Oh, I just wanna, yeah. yes, oh yes, um, council member uh, Gina Yala. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. Thank um, you. First of all, thank you everybody that joined us this evening. Um, I too want to acknowledge Mayor and and uh, happy that he's doing well in health. Um, and under my 14-day uh, quarantine that I had here, self-quarantine, I had plenty of time to talk to many of you. So uh, I'm glad that I had that opportunity. And I just want to uh, acknowledge some people. First, I want to thank Ms. Catherine from the Public Library for, for um, calling us and always giving us um, her information regarding her services. I'm, I'm a big proponent of the Public Library. I'm a a, a lifetime member um, of our friends of the library because I know the importance of it, especially in our community, especially with our students um, and those uh, that, that we service. And I really um, appreciate the new copying service that they have because I know that a lot of students going back to work may not have that um, opportunity at home. So I'm glad that they're offering that service. And I'll be um, letting my school know about that. I also want to acknowledge um, and give kudos to everyone for everything that we continue to do. And I appreciate um, um, Councilwoman uh, Monica Garcia, uh, I, the idea of generating that letter um, and sending it to our Congresswoman because I feel that it's so important what we are doing, how we are addressing um, this COVID situation. So I appreciate um, her thought behind it and I appreciate um, us doing that and letting the Congresswoman know. Um, uh, lastly, I would like to give a big shout out to our Recreation and Community Services Department. As we all know, um, a little part of my heart goes to Recreation and we know that. So I just want to acknowledge them for all of their outreach, all of their service that they continue to do for our community. But I want to thank them, and I know it's Miss April, I want to thank her for giving the virtual concerts in the park and her... Uh, playlist on Spotify because those help me on my morning walks. So Fanny, if you could please, and I'll tell her myself, but I really appreciate that. She has a wide variety on Spotify, um, a lot of playlists, different genres of music. So I really appreciate all of that. Um, so thank you everybody. And um, I, I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys again uh, in person real soon. So thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Mayor, I'd like to say something, please. Yes, Council Member Avila. Yes, ma'am. Um, I want to thank the Baldwin Park Unified School District, uh, the beginning of the school year, and all the staff from administration at the school district to all the teachers, Ms. Gina Yala, you, because you guys have gone, I know you guys ended up remote uh, teaching and you had to start remote teaching and a lot of, uh, a lot of staff were not, you know, they're not used to being so computer savvy and they're doing an excellent job. The kids are doing a great job. It's not an easy situation for the students and our first staff, but I know everybody has a great attitude 
And I know the school district provided Chromebooks for the kids and they're doing everything possible to make it a successful school year until we're able to reopen. So I, I give a lot of credit again to all the staff, the teachers, the instructional aides, the office staff, the custodians, every single person that works for the school district has done an excellent job to make sure that we're providing the best service possible for the students. We all are anxious for the students to come back because it's not the same, but they're doing a wonderful job. So I wanna thank everybody that works for our school district. Thank you, thank you, and I agree. I just wanna say about the, uh, there is going to be a food distribution this coming weekend. I was unable to, the one at St. John's, I know it was, it was good. Uh, in fact, I had the COVID-19 at the time. So I wanna thank everyone. Again, I'm glad that, uh, that Council Member Monica Garcia did mention all these different things that we together, all of us, uh, Yes. All five of us have contributed immensely in, in dealing with the COVID-19 and making sure the resources are out there. It's quite a little small city, not not major uh, money compared to other cities, but I think we've done a lot more than other cities. I will say that. So I'll, I'll just end by saying that. Mayor? Yes. Oh, yes. When you're done, can I have a minute? Absolutely. As soon as I'm finished, I'll, I'll give you the-, the That's uh, fine. Uh, Thanks, uh, Manny. Thank you. Mr. Ben Martinez, wonder if we could contact the- 99 cent uh, store uh once again for some odd reason uh, they, they were doing good but it's just literally littered with a lot of uh, garbage along the sidewalk they need to make sure that they clean that up so we could send that message uh, to them we could work with them they need to uh, follow up on that all right at this point i will give uh, the mic over to the honorable and the distinguished uh, Ms. Uh, maria uh, marie Contreras, our city treasurer anyway no manny i just want to Thank all of you, all the council, all the city employees, all the officers for doing such a great job for really caring for our community. And it's really emotional to hear all you guys' voices. I just wish I could just see you guys, but I wanna thank you and God bless all of you. I'm glad you all are good. I'm just hiding in the house and trying to walk so I could heal. But uh, I also want to wish the Vice President of Upper St. Gabriel Municipal Water, Al Contreras, on the 12th, he's going to be turning 70. So I just want to wish him a happy birthday and God bless him and keep him healthy. And he, thank and you for good. allowing me to share. He looks good for his age upcoming. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, One more thing, Mayor. Yes. Happy birthday, Al, first of all. One yes. more thing, let's not forget to do our census that we have until the end of the month. Yes. Uh, Parks and Recreation, they had an excellent parade on the side of town that's usually very low. So let's keep reminding everybody to to continue to, to do their census. Again, happy birthday, Al. I hope you enjoy. Right. Yeah, happy birthday, Al. Yeah. All righty. So at this point- Mr. Mr. Mayor? Yes, uh, Vice Mayor uh, Hernandez, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, I'd like to request uh, okay. for our- our chief deputy city clerk, uh, Ms. Morales, if she can come back uh, maybe at the next meeting uh, or the meeting soon after to kind of brief us and the audience uh, in regards to the upcoming elections and what type of changes are, uh, we should all be expecting. Because, um, you know, as you can remember earlier this year, uh, we had some early voting. Um, this year we have everything that's going to be going through uh, uh, mail-in ballots, but I believe there'll also be some uh, in-person voting. So we just need to have a little bit more information as to what will be occurring in our city and also in the LA County region for us, please. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? If not, at this point, I will go ahead and now um, request, uh, um, actually, uh, I'll move to adjourn from the housing department. That is that is my motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by who? Whose voice was that? Was that Alejandra? Councilman? Yeah. Uh, okay, Councilman. Any objections? See none. So move at this point. Good evening, everyone. Viva Baldwin Park. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night everyone. Viva Baldwin Park. Viva. Good night. Good night.